thought of an idea where I could use a slingshot to break a glass bottle to add a practical element to an effect. I decided to try this with the Gambit card throwing effect. I wanted the object that I was throwing the card at to actually be breaking in real life. So I thought using a slingshot and shooting some metal BBs through the glass bottle would be a good method to pull this off. Now, before shooting those BBs and having them fly off into the distance and hitting somebody or breaking their property, I hung a blanket on a C-stand arm and positioned that behind the bottle to catch those BBs. And this actually worked really well, those metal BBs would just hit the blanket and fall straight to the ground. So in a bit, I'm going to show how I filmed the bottle breaking and the card throwing shots, but first, let me explain how I got this card glowing effect. First thing I did was filmed myself holding a card and then brought that clip into After Effects. Inside of After Effects, I duplicated that layer and named the top layer Card Mask. Then I needed to create a mask around the card while avoiding my finger so that the glow was behind it. To do that, I used the Rotobrush tool to create a mask on the Card Mask layer. Using the Rotobrush tool makes this part a lot easier. After I had a clean mask, I went inside the Rotobrush Effect tab and changed the feather to 30% and the contrast to 1%. After that, I added a few effects to this card mask layer, and the first one was the fractal noise effect. This is going to add the look as if the card was charged with some sort of energy. And as you can see, that mask I created allows this to be behind my finger. On that fractal noise effect, I changed the fractal type to turbulent smooth, the contrast to 50, scale to 200, complexity to 8, and opacity to 25%. I also keyframed the evolution to start at zero and go to four over the course of this shot so that the fractal noise effect had some random movement to it. Then in transform, I keyframed the offset turbulence center to stay in the middle of the card so that the fractal noise effect isn't drifting around. I used one of these dots in the middle of the card to keep it lined up. I only had to line it up about every three to five frames since the card wasn't moving that much. Next, I added the glow effect to this card mask layer. I changed the glow threshold to 33%, glow radius to 200, glow intensity to 0.6, and set glow colors to A and B colors. Then I set the color A to be purple. I duplicated this glow layer and changed the glow radius to 120, the glow intensity to 0.3, and set the color A back to white. After that, I added the tint effect to the same mask layer and set the map black to the same purple color as the glow and set the amount to 32%. And then the last effect I added to this layer was the find edges effect and set the blend with original to 88%. So now I was done with the main glow effect and the next thing I did was animate the glow to turn on and spread over the card. So on the card mask layer, I created a mask with four points. I had the mask start small around my finger and then over the course of 10 frames, I keyframed the mask to grow and spread to the four corners of the card. I made sure the corners of the mask extended a bit past each corner of the card so that the glow effect was seen completely. I also kept the mask shape a bit random for the keyframes while it was expanding rather than just a solid circle or square. Then I went through the rest of the clip and made sure the mask followed the corners of the card. Next, I keyframed the opacity on the card mask layer to go from 0 to 100% as the mask begins expanding so that the glow seamlessly turns on. I had to do this for only about 3 frames. Next, I wanted to make it look like the card was giving off some sort of energy, so I found this energy ball asset on Action VFX that I used for that. I placed it behind the card mask layer, changed the blend mode to screen, and scaled it up and positioned it until just the outer smoky part was seen around the edges of the card. Then I keyframed the position so that it follows along with the movement of the card. Again, I lined the position up with one of these dots. Then I keyframed the scale to get larger as the glow is turning on to make it look like the energy effect was doing the same. I did this with the opacity as well and had it go from 0 to only 30% since I wanted the energy smoke to be pretty subtle. After that, I created a mask on the energy ball layer that went around the card and over my finger and changed the mask to subtract. This way it still looks like the energy is completely behind because you could see it right here on top of my finger. Then I keyframed that mask to follow the card for the entire clip and changed the mask feather to 50. I also added the tint effect to the energy ball and made it the same color as the card glow. And that's it for the glow effect, now let's move on to the card throwing part. To film this part, I had the camera on a tripod and placed a bottle on a table in the foreground. Then I walked back and threw a playing card towards the bottle. I made sure to throw the card so that it kind of just drifted off to the left and out of frame. Then without moving the camera, I got a shot of me using the slingshot to break the bottle. I put a cheap UV filter on the front of my lens before shooting this to protect it from any flying glass. And I also wore some safety glasses to protect my eyes. Then the last shot I got was a close-up of a playing card that I taped to a stick. I got a shot of this so that I can get a freeze frame of the card that I'll animate to fly through the air for the throwing part of the effect. And now that I had all of my footage, I could build the main card throwing effect. 
In After Effects, I put the shot of me throwing the card on the top and then the shot of me breaking the bottle with the slingshot on the bottom. On the shot of me throwing the card, I created a mask around myself so that you could see the slingshot layer underneath, but only the part with the bottle breaking. I also feathered this mask to blend the two layers together. I made sure to time up the shot of me using the slingshot to break the bottle so that it breaks right after I throw the card. Then after I had the timing of the bottle breaking done, I was almost finished. Last thing I needed to do was add the card flying through the air. To do this, I put that clip of me holding the card in front of the camera on top of both of these layers and created a freeze frame from it. Then I made a mask around the card and increased the feather. After that, I went into the card mask layer where I made the card glow effect and copied all of the effects except the roto brush and then pasted those onto the card freeze frame layer. I scaled down this freeze frame layer to start off as the same size of the card I was holding. After that, I created keyframes for the scale, position, and rotation so that it roughly stayed matched up with the card I was holding as I raised my hand. I animated the card up until the point when my hand is turning away from the camera and then cut the freeze frame layer here. I did this to add the look like if the card was real and disappearing behind my hand as I rotated it away from the camera. It's a subtle addition, but I think it adds to it. Next, I duplicated that card freeze frame layer and turned this one into a 3D layer. I did this so that I could have more control over how the card will be positioned for the part where it's supposed to be moving through the air and doesn't just look like a 2D object. I moved this 3D card layer over to start when I felt like the card was rotated towards the camera again. Then I reset the scale, position, and rotation and made new keyframes to animate it to move towards the bottle. I mainly used the Z axis for the position to bring the card closer to the camera rather than scaling it up so that it actually looks like it's moving towards the camera. I also set the last position keyframe to be past the bottle and off frame so that it quickly flies by at a continuous rate. I had to fine tune this a bit to get the right timing. And this is what the effect looks like at this point, which is pretty ridiculous. To completely finish the effect, I turned on motion blur for the freeze frame card layer so that it has realistic motion blur as it's moving through the air. And as you can see, just turning on motion blur makes it look a lot better. But to give it even more blur, I also added the Gaussian blur effect and set the blurriness to 250. I also added a Gaussian blur to the 3D card layer and had the blurriness start at 250 at the beginning of the throw and keyframed it to drop to zero right as it was hitting the bottle. Then the last thing I did was pre-compose the 3D card layer and added the echo effect to that pre-comp. Inside of the echo effect settings, I set the echo time to negative 0.018, changed the number of echoes to eight, the decay to 0.57, and changed the echo operator to screen. And if I toggle that echo effect on and off, you can see how it adds a longer motion blur trail behind the card. I also decreased the opacity for the first freeze frame layer to 40%, and this helped the card blend into the blurry background even more. And then just a little finishing touch, I added some smoke puff elements that I found on Action VFX. I added those in right as the bottle was exploding just to emphasize the impact a little bit more. Then after all that, I was finished up and had the final Gambit card throwing effect.